and the regulation of carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the blood, but especially carbon dioxide. Now, when we talk about respiration, it's unfortunate that in life sciences we use the term respiration in two ways. One, uh, when we talk about the respiration or the energy uh, metabolism that happens inside cells, and the second way is uh, the breathing and gaseous exchange. So in today's uh, video, we're using it in terms of uh, breathing and gaseous exchange. Now, there's two molecules, molecules involved in respiration, oxygen and carbon dioxide. And the relation between the two and their uh, transport in the blood is regulated, and it is regulated as a homeostatic mechanism uh, that is under the control of negative feedback. And of course, the lungs are the major role player here. Now, when we breathe in uh, normal air, it's about 21% oxygen. And it's a, there's a tiny little bit of carbon dioxide in there, about 0.04%. When we breathe out, we breathe out a gas mixture that contains about 15% oxygen and just over 4% carbon dioxide. Now, we often think that when we breathe in, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. This is simply not true. We breathe in air uh, that is 21% oxygen and has a tiny little bit of carbon dioxide, and we breathe out a gas mixture that is about 15% oxygen and about 4% carbon dioxide. Now, the fact that there's oxygen still in and a substantial amount of oxygen still in this gas mixture means that we can give artificial respiration. You know, when we, when we uh, find somebody who's injured, we can blow into their mouth and, uh, and their lungs and their blood system is able to extract the oxygen from that. So, thinking about the lungs and what happens uh, is a topic that's known as gaseous exchange. And when we think about gaseous exchange, it's important to realize that <clears throat> gaseous exchange happens in the lungs purely via diffusion. And this is a passive exchange. Gas diffuses across membranes passively. And so, as a consequence of that, there's only two things we can do uh, to increase the amount of gas that gets into our blood the amount of oxygen that gets into our blood, or the rate at which we get rid of carbon dioxide. One is to make the heart beat faster. If we make the heart beat faster, the blood flows through the lungs faster, and so the gaseous exchange uh, uh, happens more rapidly. The second way is to use, use our lungs and, the, and our breathing muscles and to breathe faster. And, and by breathing faster, we get more um, rapid uh, exchange of gases. And when breathing faster and heart beating faster happen together, uh, we can get more oxygen in and more carbon dioxide out more quickly. So <clears throat> we think about these two molecules, oxygen and carbon dioxide. And oxygen is the important one for us in terms of getting oxygen in because we need it in order to survive. We don't survive for more than a few seconds um, without oxygen at all. But we, we might think that oxygen is the thing that actually is regulated in the blood and that makes us, uh, uh, you know, that controls our breathing rate and, and our heart rate and all of those things. But in fact, this is not true. Uh, it is, in fact, carbon dioxide that is the, the, the gas uh, that, when dissolved in the blood, controls all of those aspects of our homeostatic mechanism with respect to our gas, gaseous exchange. So let's, just, let's look at this homeostatic mechanism now, because that's what this is all about. Uh, it's not about the, the, the physiology of respiration, but it's really just purely about uh, homeostasis. Now, if we, if we imagine normal carbon dioxide levels in the blood, then we do some physical activity. And as we do those, that physical activity, cellular respiration uh, increases. And as a consequence of that, we produce more carbon dioxide. Because remember, carbon dioxide is a byproduct of cellular respiration. Now, the detector, the equivalent of the thermostat in our air conditioner, is the medulla oblongata. Now, the medulla oblongata is uh, stimulated, and this is the detector, and it sends impulses out to the heart, saying, hey, heart, beat faster, man. So the heart rate increases, and blood with carbon dioxide is brought more rapidly to the lungs. This by itself is not uh, enough. The impulses are also sent to the breathing musculature, saying, hey, breathe faster. And so our breathing rate increases. You know how we pant when we do exercise. <sighs> yeah, that's it. That's the breathing rate increasing. 
and so the carbon dioxide that is brought more rapidly to the lungs is also exhaled more rapidly and so the carbon dioxide level of the blood drops and we are back to the normal carbon dioxide levels and so you can see this is a standard negative feedback homeostatic mechanism now before we finish on the topic of homeostasis I want to talk about the concept of dynamic equilibrium because homeostasis is in fact a dynamic equilibrium. We like to uh, th we think of the word homeostasis as mean staying, meaning staying the same, but it doesn't mean that it that the things that are regulated stay exactly the same. In fact, what happens is that conditions are not identical at all times, but they fluctuate within an acceptable range. And so if you look at blood glucose on the left here and body temperature on the right, you can see that the glucose levels are fluctuating up and down a small amount and temperature is fluctuating up and down a small amount. Uh, the yellow behind indicates what we consider to be an acceptable range and you can see that within normal uh, parameters the temperature fluctuates and the glucose level fluctuates. Now imagine for example with blu blood glucose we did some exercise, the glucose level would go down. Uh, if we ate some food, the blood glucose level would go up. But the regulation mechanism kicks in and keeps the, the parameters within this acceptable normal range. Same with body temperature. If we do exercise, our body temperature may go up a tiny bit. Maybe it's less than half a degree. When we go to sleep at night, our body temperature drops a little bit. <clears throat> but it's still around less than half a degree. And so the fluctuation is within this acceptable range and that's why we call homeostasis a dynamic equilibrium. Now we've pretty much covered what we need to uh, cover for the grade 12 syllabus if you want to take it further here are some things you can do. You can go on Google as I usually say uh, or any other search engine and search for terms like carbon dioxide, oxygen, gaseous exchange, breathing, dynamic equilibrium or any of the other things that we've covered in this video. You might look for some videos on this topic on YouTube and of course you can visit the library, always a good place to go. And if you find something good, particularly if you find something good via Google or, or YouTube or any other uh, source of videos or uh, animated materials online, please put it up on the wiki. And remember you can embed the videos directly into the, into the wiki. And if you find good links, you can just simply link to them in the wiki and may, maybe provide a little de description. But if you put it up on the wiki, it's, it's going to be seen by, by your uh, fellow learners and, and this will help everybody and the more we help each other the better we're going to do in the matric exam isn't it and that's all for now I'm Derek Keats and this resource is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license bye for now